Hello, 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 hello. Is my voice audible to everyone? Please let me know. Hello guys, am I audible right now? Please let me know. Okay, great. I think there's some there were some issues with the microphone itself. I have corrected it right now. I guess you um I should be audible right now. Alright? Okay, awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> Okay, great. So uh, we'll wait for two more minutes so that everyone is able to join us and then we'll start with our today's session. In the meanwhile, do you guys have any questions for me so that I'm able to address them uh, while people are joining us currently? Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Please let me know. Okay, I'm audible. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Do let me know if you have any questions uh, related to anything so that we can like I can address them in the meanwhile people are still joining us right now. I think so we'll be waiting up till like uh, two more minutes so that we are like everyone is able to start at once itself. Okay. And uh, today as well we'll be continuing from where we had left yesterday. Okay. So we had gone through the naming conventions but I think so we were right over here somewhere so we were like right, uh overwriting the variables so this is where we will be starting from today we'll try to complete uh your data types like integer floats as well as bool data type uh comparison and logical operators and we'll try to at least start uh strings as well so that will be the aim for our today's class if we are able to convert it uh, complete it then we'll try to proceed it further as well okay okay great what is the purpose of these boot camps? So why we started out with these boot camps was that people actually don't know about the technologies, what are the opportunities in these fields. People just start learning anything. Okay, they'll start just start with like Python and then go, go into deep learning, then machine learning, and then so on and so forth without even realizing that it won't like it won't be able to help them get placements. So we set up these boot camps so that we are able to give you a taste of what this particular technology will feel like if you're moving further in this particular, like trying to learn this technology, how to get jobs in these technologies, what should be the process and what are the different things that is needed to, for you guys to study. So the, and just a brief intro, a brief uh, beginner level uh, of like information, hands-on practice as well as a project so that you can include it on your resume as well. So that is why we conduct these type of boot camps. Okay. Uh, Pallavi, there's no personal attendance on WhatsApp. So like you will have to attend every single session live and in the session itself, the links are given out. So it's not sent personally on WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, Neil, I guess the Amazon project, uh, submission link has been sent to all the WhatsApp groups that were there of Amazon. Okay. Uh, when are we going to actually make this project on the seventh or the eighth day? Okay. Is there any classes for HTML and CSS? Yes, we just conducted a bootcamp on React and before that we had a bootcamp on HTML and CSS. We'll again be having one more bootcamp on HTML and CSS in the uh, recent uh, weeks as well. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. The Facebook certificates have already been sent. Uh, Vinakshi, please check your spam email as well. Okay. Uh, Neil, if you are on a group and amazon clone what whatsapp group on those group the link has been sent okay i think so the links have been sent this i will confirm with my team okay doing mba after btech is worth what is preferred mba or mtech uh akshay Jain, my uh, thinking is that people who see this is my personal thinking that if you are not doing well in your btech Okay, only those people are actually going for MBA or MTech. And if you're not able to do good in BTech, you won't be able to do good in MTech as well. So you should go with an MBA. Okay. You don't have to worry, Shudarshan. We will be like studying the project from scratch. You don't have to worry about it. It will be easy to understand. Uh, Shraddha, you will have to attend the session live itself. Okay. 
okay so let's start with our today's class okay almost most of the people who are going to join us have already joined us okay so type and type conversion revision okay so we are not going to start right for here we were a little bit towards the top okay yeah so what if we want to change or update the value of a variable so yesterday we learned about variables we learned about declaring a variables how to use a variable how to name a variable so now we are going a bit more further into it okay so for example if the, you had declared a variable let's say rent is equals to 1700 now you want to increase the rent to like 2000 so you can just write a new line rent is equals to 2000 and now the value that is contained inside of rent is the new value that is 2000 so it's easier to understand as well okay okay so facebook clone bootcamp uh, certificates have been sent in case you haven't received it contact one of the admins from your whatsapp group so yeah so that has been sent uh for the amazon clone project i think so it has not been sent don't uh, worry about it if that's the okay i will just send it right now it's uh, like give me a second uh so you are then having your rent is equal to 2000 so the value that is now contained inside of the variable rent has been increased devesh i told you to send this uh dude yeah take the phone from ashish send it right now okay so the link for the project submission will also be sent through during the bootcamp itself you don't have to worry about it okay uh, it's more like i tell someone to do something he will tell someone else someone else to do something and then that work isn't done itself but we'll make sure that you are getting the uh, links to submit the project. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. So you are having rent is equals to 1,700 rent is equals to 2,000, 2, the new value has been updated. Now that 1,700 cannot be recovered. Okay. You cannot have like, okay, so you are adding hundred to a particular number and then you are able to go back in your calculator. That isn't possible right over here in Python. Okay. That value 1,700 has been lost. This is called as overwriting a variable, not overriding. Okay, that's a totally different concept. Overwriting a variable. When a new value is assigned to a variable, the old one is forgotten. Okay, so overwriting a variable. This is called as overwriting a variable. This is a particular question that is usually asked in interviews as well. So what is overwriting? What is overriding? And so on and so forth. So you should be able to understand the meaning behind overwriting. Okay, let me open up the live chat now. I'm in Uh, the next thing is like if we had caused some damages to the property during our crazy house party and uh, now we have to pay a fine over these uh, Harsha, please focus upon what I'm telling right now. So overwriting basically means that you had a particular value first of all inside rent. So rent is equal to 1700. Now you're writing rent is equal to 2000. Okay. So you're overwriting the value that was already contained inside of rent. So overwriting means that a new value is assigned that is 2000 and the old value is forgotten that is 1700 is forgotten. That is called as overwriting the variable. Okay. Okay. So for example, if you want to apply some changes, so first of all, the rent was 1700, then the rent was increased to 2000. Now the rent now due to the crazy house party, you had to pay a fine. So you will have to calculate that as well. So rent is equals to rent plus 700. So we have already like looked at it as well yesterday that, okay, if you want when rent is a variable is on the right hand side, it represents the value that it contains. When a variable is on the left hand side, it represents the box, the variable itself. So rent is equals to rent plus 700. What would be the answer guys? If I'm writing print rent right over here, please let me know what will be the answer. Guys, if we are having print rent, if I'm running this particular line of code, what will be the answer guys? Please let me know. Two thousand seven hundred exactly. So if I'm running this particular line of code, run any way, so it allocate the resources, connect me and then initiate the resources. So that will take almost a minute. So the answer would come as 2700 itself. Okay. So it was very simple to understand. 
Now this entire line of code where you are incrementing, so this is basically called as incrementing a variable by a certain value where the value is 700. So incrementing rent by 700. Okay, so this can also be represented in a congested format in a smaller format called as the increment operator. Okay, so uh, right over here. As you are able to see the same thing, okay, rent is 1700, you are increasing the rent to 2000, okay, and then uh, you are having rent is plus is equals to 700. This is the exact same thing as writing rent is equals to rent plus 700. It's the exact same thing, okay. Sorry. So here I put up a particular comment. Okay, this is called as a comment. If you are putting up a hash and then you are writing anything uh, after that. Okay, so that is not considered as a code. It is considered as just some text that is there for the reference of the user. So it is called as comments. Okay, it is not compiled. It is not a code. It is just some text that is like used by the user itself. Okay, so to create a comment, what you can do is you can just put hash and then whatever you want to write, you can write after that. If you want to, if you are having multiple lines that you want to comment out, you can just select all those lines that you want to comment, then click on control and then forward slash. Okay. So control, select all the lines you want to comment out, then control. Okay. And then forward slash. Please increase the quality of the video to 1080p. Okay. I hope that you guys know how to use YouTube. So you would be able to increase the quality of the video to 1080p. Okay. So control and then forward slash to decomment it as well. So for example, you have commented these three, these four lines of code has been commit commented. Okay. Now, if I want to decomment all these four lines of code, now I want to convert it back to normal code itself. I can just select all these four lines of code and then again, control and then forward slash. That will uncomment everything that is there. Okay. Comment like I explained is not a piece of code. It is just a piece of text for your like reading purpose. Okay. For the user's reading purpose. Whenever so for example, what does this line represent? I don't want to write. So if I'm removing this, this will be a comment. Okay. This entire thing is a code itself. I don't want it to be run by the compiler of Python. Okay. So for that, I will just comment it out. So everything after the hash will be considered as a comment that is not supposed to be run by the compiler. It is not a code, just some text for the user to use. Let me just uh, put up the charging port. Uh, the charge is less on the laptop. Just, just a second. If I have a comment and a code on the same line, so for example, this is the line in which we are having code that is rent plus is equal to 700 that is code. And then we are having a comment as well right over here. So if I'm selecting this line and trying to uncomment it, it won't happen. It will just comment the entire line. So it takes up from the start itself. Okay. So it will treat the entire line that you want to comment this line out. Okay. So it will just comment the entire thing. See, the best thing with programming is whenever you have a question, you can directly open collab, you can test it out. Okay, so this is what will happen. Okay, so it helps you out. So programming is actually learned in this way itself. You have a particular question, okay, what will happen if this, if I do this, so you will have to just do it. Okay, it's like Nike, just do it. Okay, okay. So we can actually use the plus is equals to operator to tell Python that we are incrementing the value on the left. Okay, by the value on the right. Okay, so we are having rent is equal to rent plus 700. Uh, no, you cannot use double forward slash. Okay, that is used in Java script, not in Python. In Python, you use your hash symbol itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are other uh, operators as well. For example, minus is equals to is equals to rent is equals to rent minus 700. You are having uh, like multiplied equal to. So you are having rent is equal to rent multiplied by 700. You are also having rent divided by that is equal to rent is equal to rent divided by 700. So you can use multiple operators right over here to make different combinations of stuff up. 
okay all these operators just apply the arithmetic operator to the variable on the left with the value on the right which makes your code much more easier to read and understand okay so it becomes so instead of writing all this gibberish just remove it out and you are able to understand that okay this is what is happening okay, so it makes your code look much more cleaner at the end of the day okay the next particular topic that we are going to start off is with data types okay now in python like i said you are having a box okay so this particular box that is variables can have different shapes as well so maybe one particular type of box contains liquid one particular box contains a solid sphere one particular box contains small cuboids and so on and so forth so depending upon that the shape of the box depending upon the data it contains depending upon the value that it contains the shape of the box will also change similarly in python as well there are various different objects various different values that it can contain we have already seen some of them okay so for example when you are having let's see when we are dividing uh, rand by 700 you are able to get something that is not quite a number it's a decimal value it's not an integer okay this is called as a float you are also looking at numbers as well so 1700 that's a number that's an integer yeah we have already looked at strings as well so like python guides hello all these are different strings so we have looked at some of the data types that are present in python now we will be exploring each of those data types in a bit more depth okay uh, so far the number that we have dealt with are mostly whole numbers or integers you might have noticed that other types of numbers also exist for example if we divide an integer by another it gives us a number that is quite isn't an integer in python we represent such numbers as floats which is short for floating point number okay so float is basically short form for floating point number if we are doing shift print 3 divided by 2 although 3 and 2 both are integers but 3 divided by 2 is a float 1.5 okay we are doing 3 divided by 3 okay both are integer but when we divide it we get a float that is 1.0 okay numbers with a decibel point such as 3.14 are called as floating point numbers Note that even though the value 42 is an integer, even though 1, just 1 is an integer, but 1.0 is a floating point number. Okay. Uh, and if two integers are divided, then we get float as an answer. Even though both are integers, both give a whole number as an integer itself. But if we divide any integer, okay, we get floating point number as our value itself. Okay, you can check the data type of a value by using the built-in function called as type that shows the type of the object okay so for example you are having a is equals to 3 you are having b is equals to 2.5 so type of a okay so type of a and type of b will give us the type of the object a and type of the object b that is integer and float so let us look at it so as you are able to see the type of a is int that is the short form for integer and type of b is float that is the short form for floating point number okay an operation involving an int and a float will always give float as an output okay please always remember this an operation involving an int and a float so for example multiplication addition subtraction division it has one particular operator as int and the second one as a float will always give float as an answer when we convert one data type to another by constructing new objects of these data types we can with int and float okay so for example let's see if you want to convert so 3 is an integer as we are able to see right over here 3 is an int it's an integer okay but we want to convert it to float okay we want to convert it to float so for that we are having a type conversion type casting this is called as okay so this process is called as type casting okay we are going to convert an integer to a float okay so we are having float and then the value that is the integer that we want to convert 3 what will happen is 3 will get converted into float that is 3.0 
okay a point zero will be added to the integer to convert it into float similarly int 28.9 so 28.9 is a float right over here we want to convert it into an integer so we are putting it inside of parenthesis and putting int outside so what will happen is whatever is present after the decimal point will be deleted only it will be truncated to just the before the decimal point itself okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know so for example if i'm running this particular line of code it does not matter if it was 28.0 28.1 28.5 28.9 it will always get converted to 28 similarly for it was 3 3 or 4 5 it will always be converted to 3.0 4.0 5.0 this is how you are able to Convert the type from int to float and float to int. Great. Amazing, guys. Okay, so this is a very important point to remember, guys. Okay, so while you are learning Python, this is something that will usually be asked to you in your, uh, let's say, uh, whenever you are going to any interviews or something. This is a very important question that most people ask. Another point that you need to keep in mind is that float are an approximation to the number they represent. So if you are writing 28.9, it is not exactly 28.9. It is a little bit, a little bit bigger than 28.9. So it will be saved, even though you are able to see at 28.9, it will be saved in the memory of your computer as 28.9000123 a little bit greater so float are an approximation to the number they represent they aren't exactly that number a float can represent very large range of numbers so python should use approximation to represent these numbers in order to maintain the precision of these numbers so that when you are dividing a particular number by any other number that number of decimal points they are able to maintain okay so for that reason they are stored as an approximation to that number itself not the exact number okay so for example this floating point number 0 0.23 is in reality slightly more than 0 0.23 it will be stored in the memory as 0 0.23 or something like that so that if we add 0 0.23 to itself a few times and check its equality to the expected resultant it would be different so for example if you want to check whether really is it stored in the memory as a little bit greater than 0 0.23 so what i've done right over here is i've added 0 0.23 30 times okay to make sure that i'm adding it a lot many number of times so i'm adding 0 0.23 30 times now 0 0.23 into 30 is 6.9 so if it is exactly 0 0.23 into 30 then it should result in 6.9 here i'm checking whether the value double equal to is basically checking whether the value on the left hand side the whether the value on the left hand side is equal to the value on the right hand side or not if it's not equal it will return false if it's equal it will return true okay so let's run this you can easily count as well 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 so there are 30 0 0.23 that we are having that is equivalent to 6.9 let's check this okay so when we are running shift enter okay you are able to see that we are getting false as an answer you are not getting true as an answer we are getting false that is 0 0.23 30 times is not equal to 6.9 now if you are doing 0 0.23 into 30 instead of writing this if it was 0 0.23 into 30 it will result in it being true why is that the case because there python is able to put an uh like optimization that okay it's, it, it's 0 0.23 uh, so we have to multiply it by 30 so i will just directly do the multiplication it will be 6.9 and then i will put 0 0 0 0 1 2 3 so when i'm doing this it will look as true okay but when you were doing addition okay so it does not know python does not know that these two numbers are the same or like when you are adding 0 0.23 two times that is 0 0.46 it does not know that you are again adding 0 0.23 
So there it is not able to put that optimization. It will add 0 0.23000123 plus 0 0.23000123 and so on and so forth. So there it is not able to optimize on it and hence we are getting this is not equal to 6.9. Okay. Sir, I didn't understand the fifth concept when we divide an integer by an integer. Why did we get the answer in float? Because you don't know whether that answer is going to be a whole number or not. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 or 1? It's 1.5. So 3 divided by 2 will most probably be a float. The maximum probability of two integers to be divided should be a decimal itself. So that is the reason why it has been like by default it is decimal. Okay. Uh, to check if LHS is equal to RHS or not, yes, you will have to put two equal to signs. Okay. One equal to sign is an assignment operator. And whatever is on the left hand side, whatever is there on the right hand side is a value assigned to the left hand side. So you use like rent is equals to something that is an assignment operator. Okay. But if you want to check something, okay, if you want to check whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not, you use double equal to, okay. Okay, great. Okay, uh, so WhatsApp group link. Uh, let, let me ask Devesh to send the WhatsApp group link as well. Give me a second. Okay, so we have completed uh, some basic understanding about the integer as well as the float itself. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to go into Boolean data type. Devish, in the live chat, could you put up a link to one of the WhatsApp groups for this particular bootcamp so that the people who haven't joined it are able to join there as well? Okay, so Devish will be sending a link to one of the WhatsApp groups on the live chat. Those who aren't on any of the WhatsApp groups by DevTown can definitely join there as well. Okay, no issues in that. So Boolean data type comparison and logical operators. Bool is another data type that is commonly used in Python. Bool is short form for Boolean. Just like you are having int, you are having float. Similarly, you are having bool as well. So uh, let's move on to the next bool is short form for boolean and boolean have just two values. Okay. Just like for example, in int you are having only integer values in float you are having only decimal values. Similarly in bool you only have two values inside of it either true or false. Boolean algebra is the branch of algebra uh, in which the values of the variables are true or false itself. Okay. Boolean algebra uses the framework on which all electronic devices are built and exists fundamentally as well. Okay. So if you guys remember it correctly, okay, if you were studying uh, like electronics and physics as well in your 10th and uh, 12th, you are having your AND gate, your OR gate, your NOR gate, your XOR gate. So all these gates were used and you had like zeros and ones that you were using at that point of time. So that was Boolean values, Boolean algebra, zero representing false, one representing two itself. Okay. So can we see know the value stored in the memory of the 0 0.23 in the earlier example? Yes, Jagannath Kumar, you can do that. Okay, that is of course out of scope for uh, this particular bootcamp, but yes, you can do that. Okay, so for example, right over here, we have created two variables. Okay, Python awesome and documentation bad. Okay, so Python awesome is equal to true. Please remember the T should be capital. Okay, documentation bad is equal to false. Please remember the F should be capital. Okay. Uh, again, saying that uh, those people who haven't joined any of the WhatsApp groups um, from DevTown, uh, you can join one of the WhatsApp groups that have been provided uh, as a link in the live chat itself. Okay. Okay. No, in Python, you don't need to declare a data type name. That's why I said that Python is an extremely easy language to learn. There's not a lot of complexity in Python. Okay. 
we can use comparison operators to compare two values and produce boolean results okay for example uh, equal to equal to that we saw that was also an uh, equality comparison operator itself that compared whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not okay similarly a is equals to 3 greater than 1 is 3 greater than 1 yes 3 is greater than 1 so this will be replaced by true and the value that will be stored inside of a would be true so if i am doing is 3 greater than 1 yes it is greater than 1 so the value inside of a is true okay as you see uh, the function of all these comparison operators are evident from their names itself less than greater than less than equal to greater than equal to not equal to so on and so forth so for example greater than greater than equal to less than less than equal to then you are having not equal to you are having equal to equal to and so on and so forth okay so these are all comparison operators okay working with boolean has its own set of operators called as logical operators for example when you were working with integers and floats the operators that were you were using were called as arithmetic operators okay that is used for doing math okay uh right now what you are doing is you are using boolean values so you are having logical operators that you have already used in physics okay these operators are very useful when working with boolean values and evaluates if both the sides are true or at least one of them is true and so on and so forth for example and or not xor or and so on and so forth these are all your not as well are all your logical operators and you have already done that previously as well for example rent is equals to 1200 we have created a variable called as is affordable rent greater than 1000 so is rent greater than 1000 uh yes rent is 1200 so rent is greater than 1000 so that would be true right over here rent less than 2000 rent is 1200 1200 is less than 2000 yes it is less than 2000 true and true one and one so if both are true then the value would be guys please let me know okay if true and true if both are true what will be the value guys guys please let me know if both are true what will be the value true again that's great so this will again be uh, replaced by true and the value that will be stored inside of is affordable should be true so let's check that okay so that was our hypothesis let's run this particular line of code and as you are able to see print is affordable is true okay here we check that the so we have already like seen this practically okay so for example right over here okay it's the same exact thing rent is greater than 1000 and rent is less than 2000 we are having an and in the middle as well so this entire thing will be replaced by true so this entire thing will be replaced by true and what is not true what is not true is affordable not true so what is not true guys please let me know what is not true Guys, please let me know what is not true. False, exactly. So the value stored inside of is affordable should be false. Okay, so let's check that as well. Let's run this particular line of code as you're able to see we are getting false as our answer. Okay, okay. Next we are at strings okay so that is the next data type that we are going to learn and we've already looked at strings as well we have used it for the hello world and all those things that we have looked uh, before that as well there will be some concepts that will be coming right over here that i would like to take up along with lists so i would not be telling you right now slowly and certainly you will get to know about that as well okay but let's take up step by step don't try to run too fast otherwise you will fall down okay let's try to walk first so python has another data type in its toolkit called as strings as the name suggests of this data type uh, it deals with characters words and text okay string is an immutable ordered sequence of uh, characters okay so we will learn about immutable ordered sequence of characters like what exactly immutable order means okay we'll look at it slowly and steadily right now just remember that i have told you this 
okay we will look at it later on as well okay by characters i mean letters numbers spaces and symbols okay like uh, here also we have said that we will be explaining immutable ordered means later on okay you can create a string by using quotes right over here you can use a uh, single quotes as well as double quotes okay you can use both of them to create strings it does not matter okay when i'm running both of them are going to create the same string that is shape ai itself okay in this example we have printed the word shape ai or dev town using single and double quotes and got the same output okay uh, we can also uh, assign a string to a variable like floats and int. So motto is equals to learn code compete in turn. You can put uh, normal text. You can put capital letters. You can put spaces. You can put numbers. You can put special characters. Okay. So you can the string can contain anything. Okay. It does not matter. The string can contain anything. Okay. Uh, let's see the type also type we have already seen so what does type does can you let me know what does the inbuilt function type do in python can you guys let me know that uh, we have already seen this in uh, int and uh, float as well can you guys remind me what does type do tells the data type of the object that it contains okay so when we are running this as you are able to see we are getting the name as str that is the short form for string okay string can contain any character number spaces within the quotes however if you want to have quotes inside the string we get an error okay what is happening is this python goes line word by word okay so it's having one particular double uh, quotation marks right over here so it will try to find another quotation mark to end this particular string as soon as it is finding another quotation mark it considers only this particular portion as a string and the rest from right over here is just gibberish not able to understand anything and then again you are having one more double quotation mark so that again it starts looking for uh, a string itself and as soon as it finds another double quotation mark it ends a string right over there so how can we contain quotation marks inside a particular string itself so that is the question right over here okay so right now the first there are two ways in which we can handle this very easily the first is place the string in a single quotes rather than double quotes. This will solve your problem of having double quotes within the string. So for example, if you are having like Shiva said, you learn as you grow. So you start the string with a single quotation mark. So now Python is trying to find another single quotation mark to end the string. It comes right over here. It's a double quotation mark. It does not care. It is finding a single quotation mark. It uh, moves further again a double quotation mark. It does not care. It is trying to find a single quotation mark and then it ends the string. But the problem with this particular scenario is that what if we want to have both double quotation marks as well as single quotation marks inside a string? How can we handle that particular scenario? So for that, we are having a backslash or skip character. Okay. So you are having your backslash or skip quotes as you can see in this example backlash helps python to know that the single quotation should be interpreted as a part of the string rather than the code that ends the string basically backslash says that whatever the character is there so it's called an escape character whatever the character is there after this particular backslash is something that is of no special importance it does not have any special value to python it's a part of the string itself for example right over here we are starting off with a single quotation mark now it is again looking forward to a single quotation mark to end the string itself it moves further it uh, reaches a backslash so it's like okay so this is a backslash the next character whatever the next character is i don't care about it okay it is not special i will just move on to the next character to continuously find my single quotations again and right over here i am able to find my single quotation i will end my string right over here so when you will be running this particular line of code you are able to see that the backslash don't even appear inside your code but whatever you want 
my backslash to appear as well so if i'm putting a backslash right over here and running the code once again you are able to see that i'm getting my backslash right over here but what if here as well i want one backslash to appear so it should be like your backslash apostrophe r e this is what i want so when i'm running this particular line of code you are able to see that that backslash is not appearing at all so to uh, make it appear you want to put double backslash okay as soon as you are putting double backslash what is happening is you are basically telling python that the next backslash this backslash has no value this backslash has no value it's a normal backslash itself it is not an escape character then again you will have to put up a backslash to tell python that okay this particular apostrophe is also normal it is of no importance in that particular way you will be able to have one backslash that you are able to appear right over here so you are having one backslash to basically tell python that okay uh, so the first backslash basically appears and the rest of the thing does not appear okay so that is the basic thing right over here this backslash basically says that the apostrophe has no value and uh, this backslash basically says that the next backslash has no special value so you can directly print this particular backslash on your screen that is the main thing are you guys able to understand this please let me know The guys able to understand this please let me know amazing so here are some few operators that you use on floats and ends that can also be used on in strings as well so for example you are having your uh, arithmetic addition symbol you are having your multiplication symbol that you use on integers and floats similarly those symbols can also be used on strings as well for example if you want to attach two strings together this is called as concatenation to append two strings together you can just use the addition symbol and it will attach those strings for you so hello space world okay it will just attach everything together so you are having hello world and hello space world so this is called as concatenation okay next you can even have multiplication that you can use so what is multiplication basically try to understand multiplication is basically addition itself if you are writing word into five that means word plus word plus word plus word plus word it is add word five times what happens when you add two particular strings together you concatenate them so what will happen when i run word five times that would give me a particular string that contains hello appended to each other five times so i'm running this particular line of code you are easily able to see that we are getting hello repeated five times itself okay that is how you are using multiplication now you cannot use division or subtraction on can you repeat how three backslashes is required to show one backslash okay so <clears throat> no issues one when you are having just a single backslash what does it mean it means that you skip this particular uh, apostrophe so you need to contain this backslash to make sure that it's working okay it's working so your apostrophe isn't considered as your ending itself okay uh, Dhruv, we already talked about it multiplication has some optimization that it does python knows that you need to multiply it it will just multiply it by 0.23 and then 0.00123 so it's very close to 6.9 that decimals can be ignored and you don't have to care about it but when you are adding 0.23 30 times that after the trailing uh, decimals start adding up and it becomes more prevalent it cannot be ignored that is why it is there next so you need to contain this particular backslash now if i want to include another backslash i need to tell uh, so once i'm including just one more backslash we need to tell uh, so what this backslash is doing is it is telling that this secondary backslash has no special value it is not there to skip the apostrophe it's not there to skip the apostrophe it is just a backslash it has no escape value 
so you need to put another backslash in front of it to tell python that this secondary backslash has no value and then this backslash is basically telling that this is an escape uh, so the first is an escape backslash for the second backslash and then the third is the escape backslash for the apostrophe so only one backslash will be printed out in your output okay Okay, so we have so again you cannot use division you cannot use subtraction on strings it does not work as you are able to see right over here you will get an error saying that type error unsupported operand types for forward slash that is for division similarly if you are using subtraction as well it will again show you a type error itself okay okay are you guys able to understand please let me know are you guys able to understand up till here guys please let me know are you guys able to understand uh, please let me know guys even if you are putting any character it does not have any value like why are you doing you can directly put a character why are you putting a backslash in front of it hey so another useful function built in function in python is for the string data types is the length function okay or len function so basically it returns the number of characters in a particular string so if i'm having shape ai it will return s h a p e a i that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it returns 7 as the length of that particular string as you're able to see length shape ai returns 7 at the end of it okay secondly if you are having dev space t o w n it will also count the space as well so you are having d e v t o w n and one more space so that is almost eight characters so this will give you a answer as eight characters basically you are telling uh, python that the second backslash has no special value double backslash if you are having then you are basically telling python that this second backslash has no special value okay it's a normal backslash it's a character backslash that has no special value that is the what it, it is saying okay uh motive i have already told you that we will be coming back to what is immutable ordered sequence but that will be learning slowly and steadily not right now now you haven't learned about strings properly you haven't learned about lists properly so after learning both of them we will be able to understand what is immutable ordered sequence okay, so we will be coming right over there please be patient okay so len dev town will give you the length of the string if there are spaces it will count the spaces if there are numbers it will count the numbers if there are text it will count the text if there are special characters it will count everything every character present inside a string len will count and give you the length of the string itself okay let's put it if you are putting a backslash inside a particular string let's try to run this and let's find out it's giving us nine it is counting it as well okay but what if we are having a apostrophe so if you are having sorry if you are having a double quotes right over here what will happen let's see basically this backslash is telling that okay the next thing is uh, not to be uh, messed up with so if we are running this we are again getting nine so right over here this backslash is a special value that is basically saying that to ignore the next the next particular string does not has any special value so it will not count this particular backslash if this was just a backslash it will count it but if the backslash has some special character after it then it will not count the backslash okay okay so we are having some uh, like assignments for you guys as well try to complete it it's relatively easy uh, you guys won't be facing any problems in these assignments okay okay so we have some time let's try to complete type and type conversion as well i think so we will be able to complete it okay let's let's try to complete it so up till now we have covered four different data types uh, int float bool and strings as you recall from the previous classes python has a built-in function called as type that returns the type of an object okay 
द असाइनमेंट इज इन दी कुलाब नोटबुक इट सेल्फ आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर द नोटबुक विथ यू गाइज ओके ओके ग्रेट सो टाइप ऑफ सेवेंटी फाइव सो सेवेंटी फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट जीरो सेवेंटी फाइव अगेन ऑल दीज हैव दी सेम वैल्यू but we are represented in different data types and python so the first one is an int the second one is in a float the third one is a string and then you are having bool as well okay you don't have to submit the assignment to anyone anywhere it's just for you only the final project needs to be submitted if you want to do it it's up to you if you don't want to do it it's up to you itself okay okay so uh Okay, so we have already seen this as well. So if you want to convert a particular float to an int and so on and so forth, or an integer to a float, we have already seen that. But what if if you are having a mark? So if you are having a particular string right over here, okay, we have a particular string that uh, coding is particular string. We are having first is a particular string, but marks is an integer. Marks is an integer, and I want to add. your marks right over here i want to concatenate my marks right over here so as marks is an integer we cannot concatenate it directly because you cannot add an integer to a string it is just not compatible okay you cannot add a integer to a string okay similarly if you want to really append an integer to a string i will have to first convert it into a string itself so we will convert marks uh so let me know uh karan prakash sorry karan prakash not uh okay divyanshi panchal nisarg mehta are you guys coming to this bootcamp for the first time like this is this your first class because the notebooks and everything have already been shared with everyone can somebody provide them with the notebook guys uh, will you guys will be helpful enough to them uh could you provide them with the notebook in the live chat so that these guys can also uh, get access to the notebook okay great thank you so much guys so we will first convert marks as an integer to the string okay and then once it is a string okay then we can easily come uh, concatenate two strings together there won't be any problems in that so if i am running this particular line of code we are getting i scored 15 in the coding during my first semester okay so it's as simple as that you cannot add a particular float and an int together you will have to convert a string to an integer first sorry a uh, integer to a string first of all so that you are able to concatenate it with another string okay okay similarly if you are having a uh, marks is equals to 15 that is a string itself okay if you are printing marks and then marks goes to float you can convert a string to a float as well okay so if you are printing marks right now print marks if you are running this right over here you will be able to see that we are getting 15.0 as our output okay because now we have converted marks that is a string right over here 15 is a string we have converted marks we have type casted it from string to a float so now the value is 15.0 okay this small uh, quiz sol assignment right over here as well uh, some people don't have the link to the notebook this is the notebook guys and it contains everything Okay, all the notes and everything else as well. So those guys who don't have the notebook with themselves, I put it up in the live chat again. Okay. So it contains the notes. It contains everything inside of it. So you don't have to worry about it. In the meanwhile, I'm creating the uh, attendance thing for today. let me create the attendance link for you guys day one attendance link let me close day one attendance link let me create a day two attendance link make a copy day two attendance link copy
two attendance link send in short and copy e download a two So the attendance link is available right over here as you're able to see you can take a screenshot for the same uh, scan it or you can even uh, like just rewind it back and watch at the attendance QR once again so that's this is a YouTube video okay any other questions guys that you guys are having right now please let me know also please like the video if it's possible it really helps a lot I had explained it to you yesterday as well okay I wore the Hogwarts t-shirt I thought that that would be uh, okay no longer open I would have to open it as well day 2 okay so now it would be working now you won't be facing any problems okay so it will work right now okay so that is what I was saying so it will work the form is open okay uh so please do like the video subscribe to the channel it really helps uh us as well okay okay anything else that you guys uh want to share or do you guys have any questions for me right now please let me know do you guys have any questions for me please let me know guys Okay, so if there are no questions, then I will end the uh, session right over here. Okay, uh, please tell me about the project. So the project uh, will be on the 7th and the 8th day. First, we'll be learning about Python. Then we'll be learning about computer vision. And then we'll be going towards your uh, project on the 7th and the 8th day. So that will be the entire uh, stuff that will be following. Okay, link won't be sent anywhere. We have already showed you the QR code. Okay. Uh, sample certificate uh, let me check if I have the access to the certificate or not I will have to check that as well uh, give me a second certificate certificate certificate, certificate templates Nope. Brand kit. I actually don't have the certificates with me right now, but the certificates will be received to everyone. Okay, there won't be any problem with that. Is there any possibility you will teach uh, Python till advanced? Manideep, I have already said you guys as well that we will be releasing a advanced little Python uh, course as well on YouTube on our secondary channel right now we are releasing the C++ one. The response on the C++ one is not that great. Like uh, people don't actually want to study. That's the main thing that I have seen right now. But uh, Python will be released after that. Then we will be releasing Java as well. Okay. And that will be from at most beginning to the most advanced level in Python. That is how we will be doing. Uh, Anjum, I have already showed the QR code for today's class. Okay, you will have to scan it. And that is how you will be able to fill up your attendance as well. Okay. Okay. Um, guys, again, like I will just remind you guys, please like the video. Okay, you are almost 200 people right over here live with us. So let's make sure that at least we are able to get 200 likes as well. Okay. Playlist available after 10 days. Playlist will always be available. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Uh, Megha, this is a YouTube video. You can just scroll back and watch the QR code again. That means that you are not actually either paying attention or you came in late. So that is not good. Okay. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. And we'll meet tomorrow once again. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Le again at 7 o'clock. Any bootcamp about Java language? Uh, right now we are not planning about a bootcamp on Java, but we will be releasing a course on the Java language. Okay, very soon. Uh, I've already shared the WhatsApp link as well already. Like, I think so you didn't come on time. Uh, Nikhil. Nikhil Raj, I've already shared the WhatsApp group link as well. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.